So, after months of telling you guys that I was going to make a video about how I distressed my clothing, I'm finally making one. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to be working on today, and I actually have started working on this, um, so you're getting about midway through, but I will show you um, the steps that I used to distress it, uh, what I have done. Um, I'm actually going to be working on Mom B's, uh new pants. Um, last year, uh, the pants that I've been wearing for years actually finally gave out on me, so I needed to uh, make a new pair. <laughs> um, it is highly suggested that you use old pairs of pants. Um, two reasons for this. One, um, they tend to be a little bit more wore out at the feet of them. Um, or like down at the bottoms of the legs. Um, they look a little bit more worn in in general, actually. And two, uh, sometimes they have their own holes in them, so you don't have to make them. So, uh, I'm going to go through the list of the, in or the ingredients, the, uh, the supplies that you're going to need. Um, number one, gloves. Um, and I should probably note that I do normally do this outside. But as, as it is the middle of winter and it is absolutely freezing outside and I have no desire to sit outside in the cold and do this, um, I'm not. <laughs> um, it is very, very messy to do this. Um, you're going to see why here in a few minutes. Um, not to mention the follow-up steps to further adding detail to this includes um, fake blood, paint, whatnot, stuff that you don't necessarily want to do inside the house. So... Uh, that will eventually be another video, um, just not today. But, uh, so, first step you're going to need, obviously, a pair of pants, shirt, whatever you're going to distress. As I said today, I'm doing pants, um, so if you wish to follow along with pants, that's fine. Gloves. These just so happen to be the gloves that I wear with my costume. I am wearing them, um, because if they happen to get a little bit more messed up as I'm working, not a big deal. It's a plus. They get distressed a little bit more. I use a serrated old kitchen knife. Um, the serration is on purpose because it helps with the, uh, when you're making a hole, it helps make the hole a little bit more jagged and easier to distress later on. Sandpaper. Uh, this actually is sandpaper that goes into a actual sander. Uh, just a little hand sander. Um, you can use those. I have never used one myself. Um, it would make the sanding process a lot quicker, but I'm one of those I like to do stuff by hand so I can keep a better uh, track on how distressed it is getting, if it's looking the way I want, if it's not then I can just stop, don't have to go any further. And of course the ever so popular standby of wire brushes. I have varying uh, degrees of roughness, it goes from some of the softest to the roughest. Um, I don't normally use the soft one, but sometimes it does come in handy. Um, when you're doing something that you don't really want to put a hole in or something you just want to like make it look a little rough but not real real bad. Um, so with that said, I'm going to put my gloves on and I'm going to get started. I have already done the right leg. I'm going to show you the left leg. And I have also started to distress the pockets. I will show you how I did that. Um, I do not put holes in my pockets. The reason for that being is because I need to be able to carry a wallet and to be able to have a place to put my keys and as bad as it sounds, my cell phone because I do work at an outdoor hunt. I am a queue line actor and should there ever be an emergency and I'm the only one around, I do need to be able to call 911 so I do carry a cell phone on me. I also need to have a walkie-talkie. My character would look very funny having a walkie-talkie on her hip so I tend to keep it in my pocket if I ever have one. So. I don't put holes in the pockets, but I do still distress at least the hems of them. Um, with that said, let's start with the hems of the pants. Now, my character is a zombie. Therefore, I am a very fairly rotten one, too. Um, so, my distressing tends to be a little bit more over the top. And as I said, I'm a Q-line actor. So for me, detail is key. Um, someone that may not be as close to the actor or to the other uh, patrons and everything is what I am, uh, may not necessarily want to have as detailed of a costume as what I'm going to do. Um, so, first things first, I'm going to start off by very carefully taking my knife 
and making some nice big slashes in the hem. Now, you do not have to be precise with this. Um, you don't really even necessarily need to make them a certain length. This is entirely up to you. I also tend to do them near the hem because that's going to make, uh, the inseam I mean, because that's going to make distressing that inseam a lot easier later on. So, I'll do some longer, some shorter. I've even been known to do some of them sideways a little bit and then drag it straight down. And what that does is it creates real floppy pieces of fabric. And I actually have a better example of that on the other side that I've already done. Um, like I said, already done this side, so it's pretty well distressed. But, like I said, do it however you want. You can put as many as you want. Something you need to keep in mind, especially when doing a zombie character or a character that's going to be, uh, that's going to have pants on that are going to be tore up, is the more tore up the bottoms of them look, the better they're going to look. Plus, if you're going to be working in a muddy or dirty or dusty environment, um, they're going to get a lot more distressed as you work in them, so they're going to look a little bit better, too, the more you wear them. So, one thing that I like to do, um, as I said, I do not like perfect seams on my clothing because it looks too new. My character is not a new, fresh character. Now, if I was doing somebody that had just been bit by a zombie or something along those lines, or if I was even doing like a maniac character that wasn't necessarily someone that had been rotting or something like that, I would probably leave the inseams but keep the rips. Um, but as I said, mine is essentially, um, she's been in the ground a while. <laughs> so what I do is I'll take my knife and very carefully, I cannot stress enough the amount of caution that you must take when doing this because you can very easily cut yourself on accident. I take it and I rub it against the, essentially against the grain of the jean. Now what this is going to do, and this is going to be kind of hard to see, is this is going to loosen up the threads that are on the seams and essentially soften them up. So that when I go to take my sandpaper and my wire brushes, they're going to come apart a lot easier. Now, something you need to keep in mind, when you have a costume that requires you to rip up or destroy the bottom of the pants, you want to destroy them, but you still want to make it so that they're a, you're easily able to walk around and or run in them. Um, I also do a fair bit of climbing in mine. Um, in that I climb into the hay rides, I climb on top of tables, I also have been known to climb up on the ticket booth at times. Um, because of that, I don't want something that's going to trip me up and possibly make me fall. So I'm not going to tear these up to the point where they're below my boots or shoes that I'll be wearing. I tend to wear boots, so I don't, I have a little bit of a leeway. My boots tend to, you know, they're like uh, your typical work boots. They have a little bit of a lift to them. So I have a little bit of a leeway. But if I was wearing my tennis shoes, which I've done in the past, I wouldn't want to have a bunch dragging down that I can trip on. So the aim is to essentially distress it, but not make it dangerous to work in. Um, something else I also do not do I will not make holes above where the knees or my knees hit in the jeans. The reason for that is a very simple one in that, like I said, I do climbing and I don't want them to get caught on something. The biggest issue that I ran into last year with the jeans when they finally did run out was while I was climbing out of the hayride, a hole that I had up higher on the jeans actually got caught on the hayride and it ripped them all the way up to practically my crotch. Um, Thankfully, I wear these lovely tights that I got from Creepsville that look like nasty rotten skin. So I wasn't showing anything that was inappropriate. Um, that is also something you want to keep in mind too. Um, don't put holes in places where you don't want stuff to be seen. So um, with that said, that does not mean that I will not distress up here. I just won't make holes. And I also will still put blood, dirt, grime, grit, Anything you know that I just I, I decide to put will still go up here, just no holes. So, with that said, 
Um, essentially, safety and functionality. You want to be safe, safe. You want to be functional, but you still want to make it look like your care, like what your character is trying to represent. Um, so, with that said, now that I've taken the knife to it, I'm going to just take some very, very rough sandpaper. I very rarely ever use soft sandpaper or uh, non-coarse, I don't know how to word that, non-coarse sandpaper, and I just rub the edges. Rub, rub, rub. You are wanting to soften this up so that when you take the wire brush to it, it's just gonna come apart. Now, to explain a little bit more why I do this outside, I know it's hard to see in the camera, but there is little pieces of string and jeans everywhere. It gets everywhere. Thankfully, I'm in a kitchen that has a tile floor. All I have to do is sweep it up. So, or if I was working in the living room, just vacuum it up. But it's a lot much easier to do it outside where you don't really have to worry about that sort of thing. So, this is just the edges. You can easily take two, three days and work on a pair of jeans uh, and a costume in general on it like this. So, now that I've done that, it doesn't take very long to get them soft. Take your wire brush. I use the coarsest one that I have and just start brushing it pretty much. I mean, <laughs> now it will start to get a buildup and it very quickly of the jean that is coming off, just pull it off and keep going. Now I'm going to work on the actual slits that I made. And for that, you can either hold it up, lay it, lay it flat, doesn't really matter. The cloth tends to move around on you, made it a little bit difficult to kind of keep it in one spot anyways, especially when using a wire brush. So take it and just pull, 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 and brush, brush, brush. You want to get stringy, nasty. You want to make these bad boys look like you've been wearing them every day for the last 30 years. And really, 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 really work at the seams. Pull the string out, and if you intend to use permablood like I do, or permagrime, which is apparently a new thing um, that I have not used, it's going to get on these strings and it's just going to look even nastier. Now this is just the bottom. We haven't even worked our way up to the leg yet. You will just keep doing that, keep going around and around and around until it is to a point that you are happy with it. Um, I am not yet, but I need to move on. So, once again, I know that my knee in these pants is going to sit right about here. So, from here to the end, I am totally good to put holes in it. I can put as many holes and as random and as big a holes as I want. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now. One thing that I've always done with this character, and I don't really know why, it's just something that I started doing and it just kept, just kept doing, was I always have a hole that goes from back to front. So I just stick my knife in there, give it a good tug, gently, I should say, giving it a good tug, then make a hole. It can be as big or as little as you want, doesn't matter, this is your character, do how you want. I will tend to make holes around the, seam, the inseams. Once again, that is because it will be easier to distress those inseams when I get around to doing that. Now, when you're making holes, always remember to never make a hole going straight across. I know that seems very, very, very uh, common sense, but it is very easy to do it. You are working with a very, very tough fabric and it is very easy to accidentally make a hole too big or to put a hole where you don't mean to. So just be careful. Uh, make sure you're not putting holes um, 
too close together so that when they do rip it just makes one gigantic hole and it looks really funky. Um, you want it to look um, like it's done on purpose, but you don't. <laughs> I know that seems very counterintuitive, but you need to look, make it look more like it's rotted away, more so than what you're actually doing, which is ripping holes in it. But like I said, put holes wherever you want, put as many holes, just remember, never go above the knee. Um, if you're going to be climbing or doing anything where you might get caught, it is a lot easier to fix something below your knee and make it look intentional than it is to fix it above the knee. Plus, there's a better chance that it's going to rip and go up higher and completely just destroy the entirety of the pant. Um, if it's above your knee. And don't be afraid to make bigger slits that go all the way to the bottom. And if you just want, stab it and pull it back out. That is always acceptable. It even look, ends up, by the time you're done, it'll look like a moth ate through it. Now, all you do for this, this is just a rinse, wash, and repeat. Take your sandpaper, and just go over those holes that you just made. If you have to switch out sandpaper or get coarser sandpaper to do the, the holes, perfectly, fi perfectly fine. It is up to you how coarse you want this to be, how ugly you want this to be, because let's be honest, it ain't going to be pretty. For haunters, we're not supposed to be pretty. Now, the really cool thing about the hole that I did that goes straight through is that when I'm distressing, especially when I take the wire brushes to it, actually when I take the wire brushes to it, it's going to distress both of them at the same time, which is really helpful and really nice, because now that means I don't have to go to the back and do that one again. Now, with the holes, I will go down, and then I will turn around and brush it back up. And all that's going to do is just pull more of that fiber out. And that's what you want. You want fiber, fiber, fiber. Now, this bit works really well for not only zombies, it works good for if you're doing a hillbilly character. It works very, very well if you're doing like a post-apocalyptic character, like a, say a hero character even. Um, Really any type of character that needs any type of distressing. Now, if you don't need holes put into your clothing, um, just use the wire brushes and the sandpaper. You would be surprised at how much of a difference that makes on the actual fabric. Um, I tend to use, on especially thicker fabric, I tend to use a lot more rougher sandpaper and wire brush because, like I said, it's a thicker fabric, so using something very soft is not going to get the job done. And like I said, just pulled all that off and now it's back on there again. Does not take long, especially once the clothing is really starting to get distressed for the wire brushes to get full. So keep an eye on that. And if something's not looking the way you want it to, keep distressing or keep adding holes or something until it looks the way you want. Um, this one I'm working on, just the single hole. 
and you will be shocked at how just one little tiny hole can look a million times better just by taking a wire brush around the outer edges of it. From a single hole, you get what looks like is a moth-eaten hole. And that was just a single little slice with my knife. I just stuck it in, pulled it back out. Here's what it looks like before. You can barely even see it. Take my wire brush to it. And now you can see it a lot better now. And this is strictly a practice makes perfect thing. You are going to find that some 